We are now going to look at how you should approach decision-making questions. And this is what I said to you previously. I've touched on this. We can do our calculation in one of two ways. Either we can use the total or the comprehensive approach, or we can use the incremental approach. And what I have already told you is opportunity costs are only relevant when we are using the incremental approach. So on the next couple of pages, we're going to work through various different types of decisions that companies need to make. And I'm going to show you the calculations using both approaches. We're going to do the calculation using the total approach and the incremental approach. And you guys are going to see, regardless of the approach that we use, we are going to get exactly the same answer. So you can use whichever approach you want to because it does result in the same answer. However, just read questions carefully. You might be faced with a situation where they tell you to use a specific approach. And obviously, if the question does require you to use a specific approach, then you must follow that approach. So what do we do with the total approach? With the total approach, guys, we are going to perform two calculations. And when we perform the two calculations, we take all costs and all revenues into account. Total revenues and total costs. In other words, this includes relevant and irrelevant information. So we are going to do two calculations, one for each alternative, and we take the total cost of each alternative into account. Or if we look at the incremental approach, we are going to perform one calculation. And when we perform one calculation, we only take into account things that differ between alternatives. In other words, we only take into account relevant costs and relevant revenues. So what are the different types of decisions that companies are required to make? The first type of decision we are going to consider is the make or buy decision. So guys, this can also be referred to as an outsourcing decision. So should the company make the product themselves or should they outsource production and buy the product from somebody else? So look at this example. Sterling Limited produces a component that's used in the production of one of the company's main products. The cost to make 10,000 units is budgeted as follows. So this is my cost to manufacture 10,000 units. Direct materials, direct labor, variable overheads, fixed overheads, and depreciation, giving me a total manufacturing cost of 560,000 Rand. Now, what I want you to do, guys, is quickly go through the list of costs you've been given and identify what is fixed and what is variable. So, direct material is always a variable cost. Direct labor, it's a direct cost. So direct labor is also a variable cost. Direct labor can always be traced to a specific product. If they tell me it's direct labor, it is a variable cost. Variable overheads are obviously variable. Fixed overheads are obviously fixed. And guys, depreciation, unless they give me any other information, I need to assume that this is straight line depreciation, which means it is also a fixed cost. Then I'm told that the units can be purchased from an outside supplier at a cost of 40 Rand per unit. And we need to determine whether they should make or buy the components. Now I said to you guys, either we can perform the calculation using the total approach, or we can perform the calculation using the incremental approach. Please note, I'm showing you both approaches so that we cover both approaches. But if you were faced with a decision-making question like this, you would never do both approaches. You are only going to perform one approach. If the question is silent, you are going to select the approach that you are more comfortable with. What I recommend, guys, is the total approach because it's much easier. So if you get confused, rather use the total approach. It's much easier.
However, you obviously need to know both approaches because if the required specifically asks for the incremental approach, then you need to do your calculation according to the incremental approach. So what I'm going to start with first, guys, ignore the incremental approach for now. We are only going to look at the total approach, okay? And using the total approach, if we go back to what I said to you here, we are going to perform two calculations. The one calculation is going to be the cost if I manufacture the product myself, and the other calculation is the cost if I buy it from an external supplier. So two calculations. And when I perform these two calculations, I take my total costs and revenue into account. I don't try and determine what's relevant and what's not relevant. I look at the total cost for each alternative. So that's what I'm doing over here with the total approach. Two calculations. This is my cost if I make the component. This is the cost if I buy the component. If I make the component, we have direct material, direct labor, variable and fixed overheads, and a depreciation cost. So you can see we've got a total cost of 560,000 Rand if I make the product. I don't try and determine what costs are relevant and what costs are not relevant. I take all of my costs into account, my total costs. When I'm looking at the cost to buy, I do exactly the same thing. I take the total cost to buy into account. Now, please be careful. We know that the units can be purchased from an outside supplier at 40 Rand per unit. And in this question, we are working with 10,000 units. So the cost to buy from an external supplier is obviously going to be 400,000 Rand. It's the 40 Rand per unit multiplied by 10,000 units. However, if I decide to buy these products from an external supplier, I will still incur some of these costs over here. I won't incur the material cost because that's a variable cost. So if I don't manufacture the product, I won't have to buy material, so I won't incur the material costs. I won't incur the labor cost because it's also a variable cost. So unless I produce, I won't incur any costs. If I buy the product from an external supplier, I won't have any direct labor costs. Exactly the same for my variable overhead. All three of these are variable costs. Therefore, if I don't produce, my cost will be zero. I only incur variable costs if I actually produce. So if I buy the component from an outside supplier, my cost is zero. So you can see that over here. When I'm looking at the cost to buy, I don't have a material, a labor, or a variable overhead cost. Okay? They are all variable costs. However, in this question, we have fixed overheads of 160,000 Rand. Now, guys, please remember, fixed overheads do not vary with production. So if I make 10,000 units, my fixed cost is 160,000 Rand. And if I outsource production and I don't make those units, my fixed cost is still going to be 160,000 Rand. Unless they give me information in the question that indicates otherwise. So what they could do is they could tell you in the question that if the company outsources, they won't have to rent the factory anymore, so they'll then have some savings in their fixed cost then you can maybe have a fixed cost saving. But in this question, it's completely silent. They just tell me I have fixed costs of 160,000 Rand. And because it's a fixed cost, fixed costs don't vary with production. So whether I make the product or I outsource production and I buy it from somebody else, I'm still going to incur those fixed costs. So the cost to buy needs to also include that fixed cost of 160,000 Rand. The same applies for depreciation, guys. First, understand what is depreciation actually. Remember, depreciation just means I purchased an asset in the past. So let's say a couple of years ago, I purchased a machine for my factory. However, we don't expense the machine straight away in profit and loss. When we buy the machine, we first treat it as an asset when we purchase the machine and we expense it over its useful life. So if it has a useful life of five years, what we do is we take the cost of that asset and we write it off over five years. 
we expense the depreciation over a period of five years. So guys, that's not an actual cost. Do you agree? This is not an actual cash flow, the depreciation. The depreciation is just an expense, but the cash flow actually happened in the past. I purchased this asset in the past, and I'm now writing it off over its useful life, which means even if I decide to buy this component from an external supplier instead of manufacturing it myself, I'm still going to have this depreciation cost because I already purchased this asset in the past. You can't now avoid the depreciation cost. You can't change what you did in the past. In the past, you bought the machine and you're now expensing it over its useful life. So whether you make the components or not, you are still going to incur that depreciation expense. So it must be taken into account. So guys, that is my total approach. I calculate that if I make the product, it's going to cost me 560,000 Rand. If I buy the product, it's going to cost me 620,000 Rand, which includes the cost of actually buying and also the two costs which I will still incur even if I don't produce. So if I compare the two, you can see It is 60,000 Rand cheaper to rather manufacture the components. So therefore, the company should make the component. We can see it's cheaper to make than to buy. That is my total approach. Two calculations. I don't look at what's relevant and what's not relevant. I look at the total cost to make and the total cost to buy. I then compare those two total costs and I determine what the company should do. With the incremental approach, what did we say? Now, instead of performing two calculations, we are only going to perform one calculation. And when we look at this one calculation, we only take relevant costs and relevant revenues into account. We ignore everything that is not relevant. So if you prefer the incremental approach or if the required specifically asks for the incremental approach, then this is how you would do your calculation. So remember I said you would never do both approaches, you do one approach or the other approach. Either depending on what the required asks you to do, or if the required is silent, you pick the approach that you prefer. When we are looking at the incremental approach over here, I'm assuming that they purchase the product externally. So, first thing I do guys is I go through the list of costs that I've been given over here, and I determine what's relevant and what's not relevant. Now first, all of these variable costs over here are going to be relevant. Why are they relevant? They are all future cash flows that differ between alternatives. So it complies with my definition. Why are they future cash flows? It's money I'm going to spend in the future and they're actually cash flows. They differ between alternatives because they are variable costs. If I make the components, I will incur these costs. However, if I outsource and somebody else makes the product, I will not incur the cost. So because it's a variable cost, it differs between the alternatives. Or instead of applying the definition, we can look at the general rule. And the general rule says if the cost is avoidable, it is relevant. All three of those costs are avoidable. I can avoid the material, the labor, and the variable overhead if I outsource, because then I won't incur any of those costs. And because it's avoidable, it's relevant. So guys, all three of my variable costs are relevant. If we decide to rather purchase the product externally, I will have a saving in all of those variable costs. So that's why I'm showing it as a negative amount, guys. We're trying to work out here costs. These are all savings. 
If I buy the product externally, I will save 60,000 Rand on material, I will save 160,000 Rand on labor, and I will save 120,000 Rand on variable overheads. Those are all savings. Okay. However, for my two fixed costs, whether I make the components or I outsource and I buy from another supplier, we will still incur those costs. Regardless of what I do, I still incur the cost. It doesn't differ between the alternatives, so it doesn't comply with my definition. They definitely, well, the fixed overhead is a future cash flow, but it does not differ between alternatives. Regardless of what I do, I still incur the cost. However, the depreciation isn't even a cash flow. It's a future expense, but it's not a cash flow, and it doesn't differ between alternatives. And because these are not avoidable, Regardless of what I do, the company still has those costs. Because they are not avoidable and they don't differ between alternatives, they are not relevant. And with the incremental approach, we only take into account relevant costs and relevant revenues. We saw that above. We ignore anything that is not relevant. We only take relevant costs and relevant revenues into account. So I do not take those into account. Then, if the product is purchased externally, it's going to cost me 40 Rand per unit. So 40 Rand per unit for 10,000 units means I have a cost of 400,000 Rand. So you guys can see the net effect is, using the incremental approach, if I purchase externally, I have an extra cost of 60,000 Rand, which means it's 60,000 Rand cheaper to manufacture the component myself. We come to exactly the same answer, therefore we should make the component. So regardless of whether I use the total approach or the incremental approach, you can see it is 60,000 Rand cheaper if I make it, or it's 60,000 Rand more expensive if I outsource and I buy from somebody else, so therefore I should rather make the component. We get exactly the same answer. Another way to look at the incremental approach, guys, is remember, if something is relevant, it differs between the alternatives. Which means, look at your two alternatives. If I make the product, I have a material cost of 60000 If I buy it, I don't have any material cost. It differs between the alternatives, so I have a saving of 60,000 Rand. The same for all of my variable costs. If I make the product, I incur the cost. If I don't make the product, I don't incur the cost. Because it differs between the alternatives, it is relevant. The fixed overhead is exactly the same for both alternatives. Because it's the same for both alternatives, it is not relevant. It is not avoidable, it does not differ between the alternatives, so it is not relevant. Depreciation, the same thing. Same for both alternatives, does not differ between the alternatives, it is therefore not relevant. You can see my discussion over here. For the fixed overhead, it's not avoidable, it's the same for all alternatives, so it's not relevant. For the depreciation, it's not a cash flow, so it's actually a sunk cost because it's an asset that we purchased in the past. It's not a future cash flow. We're just expensing the asset now through a depreciation charge in profit and loss. It's money already spent in the past. You could have also said here that it's the same for both alternatives. And because it's the same for both alternatives, it's not relevant. The cost to buy is different. If I make it, I don't incur the cost. Obviously, if I buy it, I do incur the cost. So because it's different between the alternatives, the cost is relevant. Okay, so please be careful. The incremental approach is the difference between the two. It only takes relevant costs and relevant revenues into account. With the total approach, we take into account total costs and total revenues.